How you doing everybody? My name is Aaron Hilliard. I'm the Vice President of the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society. Today we're going to head into the mountains of Washington State to forage for some Boletus edulis or the Porcini mushroom. This is one of the most sought after wild edible mushrooms that you can find for yourself. So come with me on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland to head into the woods and discover what it looks like to find Boletus edulis in the wild. Mushroom Wonderland. The word porcini is Italian for little piggies, but we're not talking about little pigs here. We're talking about delicious edible mushrooms that grow wild in the Pacific Northwest. The porcini, also known as Boletus edulis, is a highly sought after culinary wild edible mushroom these mushrooms are mycorrhizal associates, so that means that they associate with certain trees, and you cannot find these mushrooms growing without their mature host partner trees. About 15% of all mushrooms are mycorrhizal. That means they need a tree or a plant to grow with. Boletus edulis, along with the golden chanterelle, the lobster mushroom, the matsutake, these are all ectomycorrhizal mushrooms that need trees to grow with. Commonly cultivated mushrooms like the agaricus bisporus or the common button mushroom sold in grocery stores are known as a saprophyte. They can grow simply on decaying compost. That's why they're easy to cultivate. On the other hand, Boletus edulis, very difficult to cultivate. And that's why these mushrooms have to be foraged wild in the forest before they can be brought to the dinner table. As of now, these mushrooms defy cultivation and still require a picker to go out into the woods and find them to make it to the market, the restaurant, or to your dinner table. Boletus edulis is a really popular wild mushroom. These are also known as porcini, the penny bun, the sep, the king bolit. The word porcini is Italian for little piggy because they're so cute and fat and stout. These mushrooms will fetch a good price in the market and they can't have any bugs in them. One thing about this mushroom is that the flies and the fly larvae love these uh, more than humans do. So it's a race when these pop up to beat the insects to them and try to get them to a market where they can be sold before they start to shrivel out and dry. Fresh mushrooms just don't have a very long shelf life and that's part of what makes these so expensive is because getting them from here in the mountains down to the market is a challenge. This mushroom is a mycorrhizal mushroom that happens to grow with conifer trees here in Washington state. And they can be picked up high in the mountains at the end of summer uh, before the frosts kick in. So there's kind of a small window to pick these mushrooms and commercial pickers will uh, come up to these forests and set up camp on specific weekends of the year. And mushrooms don't abide by human calendars and timetables. They abide by the weather and the climate. And so when it's the right temperature and the right moisture, that's when they're gonna pop up. And there's a pretty short window of time to uh, find these mushrooms before the bugs do. So they start at higher elevations where it's cooler and wetter, and then they'll be working their way down the mountain and the pickers have to chase them down the hill. There's people that buy these mushrooms and then distribute them. But these number one porcini buttons, they pay a pretty good price for, and uh, someone could actually sustain themselves if they were good enough at picking these mushrooms. Where do they go? You, to the uh, markets? Wholesaler? Oh, uh, wholesaler. Yeah. Yeah, wholesaler. How much, how much you pay for fresh number ones like that? Right now, $12. $12 a pound? Yeah. 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 Some of the things that you risk going out into the woods to pick porcini is that you're looking down at the ground all the time and I'm up here at like 4,000 feet and there's nobody around and if you happen to get lost, it can be a really panicky, scary situation. 
the lengths we go to for really good mushrooms, I suppose. And you might spend all day walking around in the woods and not even really find any. I got lucky this weekend and found enough for my family and friends, but in order to sell them commercially, you gotta get hundreds of pounds of these, which takes a lot of work. Walking through this brush can be really difficult, especially when it's wet and it's raining out today, so it's making the mushrooms extra dirty, and they really like clean mushrooms when they buy them. So Boletus edulis, or the King Porcini mushroom, definitely one of the most delicious. If I could describe the flavor, I'd say it's like a buttery, nutty, very savory, good vehicle for butter and salt, and a delicious, delicious mushroom. If you don't have the guts to get out here in the forest, don't worry, some of us will, and hopefully you can get some of these on your dinner plate. The Boletus edulis, or the Porcini mushroom, personally my favorite mushroom to eat. Sometimes these mushrooms will grow in clusters like this, and I can see in the bottom of this sponge that there's actually little insect holes. And so, personally, I don't really care for eating bugs. Uh, some people would claim, you know, it's just protein. A good way to tell is cut right into the base, see if worms burrowed into the base. This one is clean in the base. Looks like there is some in the sponge. You know, this one would still be decent for the dinner table. So I'm still going to take it with. Um, and I just clean them up here at the place where I pick them to minimize a bunch of this pine needles and stuff getting stuck all in them. So these are gonna get cleaned again when we get home, but I do an initial prepping and cleaning while I'm on the mountainside to get them, um, you know, ready for transport. These mushrooms are pretty easy to tell from other mushrooms because of this huge bulbous base. And then they get something called reticulation, which is a feature right here on the stipe. So on a mushroom, we call this the stipe. That reticulation, that really bulbous base, this spongy pore surface underneath, and that really bread colored cap. I mean, you, you can't mistake this really for anything else. There are some other types of bolites out here. Most of them not dangerous. Some of them will give you a belly ache, but it's a relatively safe mushroom for you and your family to go out and pick. Uh, if you ever wanna try these and not pay the huge absorbent market prices, you can go out there yourself and pick them. This one's considered a Boletus edulis variety edulis, and there's a few different varieties of this exact species of mushroom, but Boletus, some of the finest mushrooms in the world to eat. As you see here, I came across a pretty big assortment of mushrooms while out foraging today. And so the other really golden ones are known as chanterelles. Those also sell in the market, but these ones are just coming home to go to family and friends. And so a beautiful mixture. I'm definitely not gonna leave behind these gorgeous golden chanterelles. These are some of the most popular mushrooms uh, that occur in the Pacific Northwest. If I could give any advice to the beginning mushroom forager, get yourself a good basket. One of these are invaluable when you head out into the woods uh, because it helps to not get your mushrooms all smashed. You don't wanna carry a plastic bag because the mushrooms will kind of sweat and turn to mush in there. And also, as the mushrooms are traveling along in your basket, it's gonna be dropping spores. So I like one of these wicker baskets that kind of has a lot of gaps in it. You know, there's other braided baskets, but they just don't really uh, let too many spores get through. So I used to scoff at that, but I've actually become quite a believer. Once I started using a microscope and seeing just how many spores are actually coming from mushrooms, um, there's a good chance, you know, every drip of rainwater that comes out of this basket it's just full of thousands of spores. So I'm really trying to help distribute these spores so I can come back to this area year after year and pick more mushrooms. Another tip if you're a beginning forager is to get yourself one of these foraging knives and it's got a hook blade. And this works really nice for cleaning mushrooms and for cutting them off at the base if that's what you wanna do. And it also has a little brush on the end that you can kind of get um, you know, the bulk of the pine needles and fir needles out of the gills and out of the pore surface before you put them in your basket. Um, I'll put a link for these and for one of these foraging bags in the description of the video. Tonight, I'm gonna make some chicken pasta with porcini mushrooms. Gonna slice up a couple of porcini mushrooms fresh from the mountains. Ooh. Oh, so fresh. Just doesn't get better than this. Little extra virgin olive oil. Into the pan go our mushrooms. We're gonna add a nice dollop of butter. Get these really cooking.
All right, we're gonna make a little bit of room in this hot pan. Plenty of fresh cracked pepper. Plenty of kosher salt. We're gonna let this all cook together. There we go, we got some golden brown going on. This is cooking really nice. Our sauce was refrigerated, so we pretty much just have to wait till it warms up. Meanwhile, our noodles are boiling away really nicely. Drain the linguine. Do you know how to tell when your linguine is ready? You taste one. What'd you think I was gonna say? Perfect, al dente. All right, our sauce has been chugging away. It is beautiful, it is thick, it is rich. It's got all those beautiful porcinis chicken and fresh basil. Now I'm gonna take this pasta, I'm gonna add it right into that sauce. Here we go, it's time to plate this up. Little linguine with the chicken and the porcinis. Make sure to get some nice big chunks on there. We're gonna hit this with some shaved Parmesan. We're gonna hit it with just a little more fresh basil. We got a nice chunk of baguette, and we have some dipping oil, and voila, you have the most amazing chicken porcini dish ever. All right, I think you already know what I'm gonna say about this, but I gotta, gotta give it a try for you. Let me get a nice chunk of that porcini. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. If you like mushrooms, if you like my channel, if you like eating good food, make sure to follow or hit subscribe. See you on the next one. Much love, everybody.